as far as uh, the EPA, who we are is very much out there on, on the web. Um, so I would really uh, stick to the mission, which is protecting human health and the environment. That is the mission of the agency. Um, we are a regulatory agency, which means we enforce environmental laws. What we do at the Chicago Regional Laboratory is analyze environmental samples of water, soil, air, sludge, sediments, waste, uh, etc. We also, at the regional lab, uh, develop uh, analytical methods for emerging contaminants where there may not be an existing way to measure those compounds in the environment. We're expanding the capa our air analysis capacity here at the regional lab, and I am in the process of setting up a whole third system that will be dedicated for um, samples, highly contaminated samples, let's say samples from these contaminated sites. Next week we're expecting a sizable uh, project from a site with contaminated groundwater and we'll be analyzing those uh, for volatile organic compounds. <laughs> they know they need to monitor for a certain compound, but we don't have a method for it, so what do you do? So you're, you know, you're actually bringing up the analytical method to measure it in the, the matrix, the water in this case. I mean, as far as I can remember, even from being a child, always very, very, very curious and full of questions, um, many of which were about how the natural world around me was working. I did um, have my roots in a more rural environment. The natural world was always very much part um, of my, uh, my childhood, and it was full of questions and very curious about it from the get-go. So that was there, um, and I have, you know, my, my family to thank for encouraging that and nurturing that curiosity. I remember starting to fall in love with chemistry in high school. Once I started to really learn, a, you know, a little bit about chemistry, I thought it was just fascinating. I was a late bloomer. I didn't go to college at 18 or 19, um, so I put a lot of uh, consideration into choosing a major. So I wasn't coming at it from a, mm, I like science, let me explore these different majors. It was, this is what I want to get paid to do for a living. What's a good degree to do that? Plus, I like it. <laughs> I was going the community college route, which I very much am a supporter of. It worked out really well for me and I know it does for a lot of people. I did consider a chemistry major but I liked, I was more interested in the coursework for the environmental science program at the undergraduate level. The Terrorist Society was actually a good way to meet some speakers um, and stay involved and build um, build a little bit of networking as well as the extracurricular cred you know, while you're involved with studies. I finished my graduate work in December and um, saw a posting on the, one of the EAS bulletin boards for an internship here at the laboratory and um, doing air analysis. I applied for it, got an interview, and was, um, got the internship. So I didn't have any downtime from when I finished. I took a position um, with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District uh, in their monitoring and research department. It was a wastewater treatment process group um, as a laboratory technician. the ability to follow through. 
I mean, you can't start the scientific method and quit halfway in. I mean, you're never going to find any answers that way. The ability to troubleshoot. Um, but that, again, is, is um, based on organization, you know, the ability to um, apply logic. The uh, mapping, the geographic information systems, it's great if you can get into some courses to learn the software. Um, what's more important is the fundamental understanding of what a geographic information system is and how you would set one up or what the components are, understandings about data, data quality, um, how, to, how to manage data, um, I think are the essential knowledge or skills to draw from a set of courses like GIS. Statistics, definitely. Personally, I, I would love to find a statistics class to audit. If you could catch any experience modeling, um, like I got uh, Geochemist Workbench, the folks down at UIUC developed that and we used it in the geochemistry courses. Just making the connection and relating, you know, the environment, whatever it is, to the person, whether it's urban, rural, uh, small town, suburban, whatever it is, the, the best way to communicate about environmental issues is to strive to make the connection between environment and, and person, environment and self making the issue relatable and not making the issue a hammer over the head. I think that's probably the least effective way to communicate about environmental issues.